Tina Cooks is made possible through the generous support of E.T. Cody and Sons Auto Parts, Lemonster, Papa John's Pizza, Lemonster and Fitchburg, Boucher Construction, Central Mass Sand and Gravel. Welcome to Tina Cooks. Today we're doing pizza. We're also going to do a pizza frizza, which is a fried dough, which I ate when I was young, growing up. Loved it. I have three cups of tempered water. You want it lukewarm. You don't want it, you know, hot, hot. It'll, it'll kill your yeast and too cold, it won't culture. What we're going to do is we're going to actually culture our yeast first. I'm going to put in a tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons of salt, and about a tablespoon or so of oil, olive oil. I just drizzle that in because a little more won't hurt you. <laughs> there we go. I have three packages of yeast. It's a, it's a powdered yeast. Okay, I got my trusty scissors here. And um, we're going to open these up. And we're going to um, let our yeast start. It's going to ferment. We're going to test it to make sure that it's good. Make sure you get out all the yeast. Just stir this around a little bit, like so. Mix it in. And we're going to give it a few minutes, and it'll start to froth or foam or activate. OK. There we go. I'm going to put this into place here, like that. This is my trusty dough hook, which you need when you're doing pizza dough. And these are my flour, my flour shoot. But I'll put that on after we see the yeast start to activate. Oh yeah. Now you can actually see this yeast bubbling. It's actually gonna, you're gonna see it coming up in there. I don't know if it'll do it right away, but it was just doing that. This yeast is good. You can see it in here. It's starting to, so we're gonna, we're gonna continue with our dough. So we're going to put on our flower shoot, okay? My flower shoot is supposed to help me stop making a mess, but it doesn't always work that way, but that's okay, because we're cooking and we're having fun. All right, we're going to pick this up. Now, I have, I'm going to put this on like a stir. We want to put it on a stir to begin. I have three cups of water. I have three packages of yeast. I have a tablespoon of sugar two tablespoons of salt and a couple of tablespoons of olive oil and I'm go because I have three cups of water I'm going to start out by adding six cups of flour. Now it's a little bit hot, it's a little bit humid, you might need to use a little more. So we're going to go one, two, three, Four, five, six. There we go. We're going to let that mix up. I'm going to just put it up a little bit. You do have to knead this. It takes a little bit of time to come together. All right, this is kind of loose, as you can see. If you look in here, you're going to see that it's, it's really, really sticky. So I'm going to add another cup of flour, and we're going to let that work in a little bit. Now, see this chute? <laughs> if I would have just done that without the chute, it would have been all over the place. <laughs> okay, this looks like it's going to come together pretty good. Let's see. I'm going to also, I'm going to put this out on the counter 
and I'm going to knead it a little bit more after it's, it's done in the machine. I think that's still a little bit too sticky, so I'm going to put this down again. And I'm going to add about another half a cup more. I don't, you don't want to add too much flour at this point because the, the, the dough will, the flour will absorb the moisture because flour is like that. It, it starts out sticky, sticky, but watch and see the texture of it after it rises. It's really nice. Now this is going to work out good. I like this just the way it is right now. Take this off so you can see. My trusty scraper. You need a scraper to get the bowl. So we're just going to let this whisk around a little bit here and... Okay. This is okay. We're going to take this down, take out the dough hook, and pull her down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to scrape this off. This is going to be a little bit sticky. Oops, Menager. I always keep flour around when you're working with dough. That way you can control how dirty your hands get. We're going to scrape this out onto the counter. Okay. Like so. There we go. We're going to knead this now so because we want to work it a little bit. Make sure there's flour under it because it does get sticky and it will stick. You're probably going to knead in another half a cup of flour or so. You want it to be not so sticky. You work it a little bit. Just knead it up. The machine really kneaded it most of the way. I just like to make sure that there's flour in it so that it doesn't get all sticky. And there we go. This is so soft and so you can see by the texture when I poke it how soft it is. It's very, very delicate. Love it like that. All right, I'm going to get a metal bowl. Okay, now this first rise is going to be approximately an hour, okay, a good hour. You want it to double in size. All right, now I got to get my other bench scraper out of here. Okay. While I was doing, I already did this one ahead of time so that you could see the first rise. Now this is going to stick to the bowl here. Let me see, I got my bench scraper. It's a, little, it's a little warm today, so this does rise on a warm day a little bit faster. But that's okay, not a big deal. It's a little bit sticky, but that's not a big deal either. Let's set that aside. Now this first rise, I'm flouring the top because it's sticky. What you do at your first rise when you punch it down is you want to cut it into three pieces. That's not really that equal, so we're going to chop off this here. I guess if you want a way to be accurate, way to be accurate. That's the way you got to do it. Me, wait till you see what we do with them. It doesn't matter if they're that accurate. In a restaurant, pizza house, we weigh. We used to weigh the dough. I've worked in Quite a few pizza houses love pizza. It's like my favorite thing to do. Now you're just going to punch this down. You're going to put it into a ball, okay, and tuck it. You want to flour it a little bit. Same thing with this guy. Punch him down, work it into, the, into a ball. Now this second rise is not going to be an hour. It's going to be like a half an hour. Because after this rise, I'm going to put them in the pans we're going to cook them in, and then we'll be able to let them rise a last time in there. So I actually rise, I, in, in all it's about two hours that you rise this, raise this dough, okay? Now these are gonna kinda like rise and stick together, but it's not a problem. And even though the dough is soft, every time you work it, you're incorporating a little more flour into it. So by the time you're finished, it's not going to be, uh, um, it's gonna have more flour in it than we originally put in. Okay, so you mix the dough, you give it an hour rise, you cut it, you shape it into balls, 
you give it a half an hour rise. We'll be back in a half an hour. We're gonna start with a nice tomato sauce for our pizzas. Now, tomato sauce for pizza is like when you make your sauce for yourself. Everybody has their own flavors, their own tastes, their own things they like to do. Me personally, I like a nice crushed tomato, but the kids won't eat crushed tomato with skin, so I buy the one without the skins in it. Okay, so here we go. You can use sliced tomatoes, pomodoro sauce, it's a, just a big, basically a tomato sauce. I'm going to start out with a little tiny bit of chopped, whoa, watch out you don't chop your fingers. No cuts this time, not like the fish episode. I was bleeding to death and Kyle wouldn't let me stop shooting. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to mince some onions up and we're going to do our garlic. I'm going to do nice little thin slices like so. My pan's getting hot. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in here just to coat the bottom of the pan. Okay, like so. When you're pouring and you're cutting and you're adding stuff, it looks like it's a lot more than it, you, it actually is. Okay. Now, we're going to let, I didn't like this rib, it's too soggy, so it's not going in there. All right, we're going to let this saute a little bit because I don't actually like to bite into chunks of onions when I'm, I'm eating a, um, pizza, so I just let those saute a little bit. Now, naturally, I forgot my basil and parsley, which is in the freezer, because my sister Anne-Marie has been on a herb binge. So I'm going to get those out of the freezer. You watch the onions fry, and I'll be right back. Okay, this is parsley, and this is basil. I showed you how I rolled them like little cigars and packed them in freezer bags because you can use them for a long time, especially if you get a good crop. These are just frozen. They're gonna be just like they were picked because they're nice and green still. You can see that I've been cutting. This is parsley, it's hard to roll in cigars, so you just kinda of clump it, okay? And then when you're done with it, you stick it back in the freezer because it's not gonna thaw that quick. Okay, and then we'll start out with the basil, which is, should be in a cigar, but she gave me so much this year, I was just, clumping it all together. <laughs> it was quite a bit of basil she gave me. Okay, we're going to chop up some of this. See, it's frozen, but it's still, it stays nice and green, and the flavor from it is just like you picked it. It's really, really a good way to freeze your herbs. Okay, we're going to add our herbs, nice and fresh. A little bit frozen, but they're going to be delicious. That You can't believe how much they add. It's just like you picked them out of the garden. It really is. Okay, we're going to swirl those around. And I'm going to grab some wine because what good is sauce without wine? Forget it. You don't need a lot in a pizza sauce. So we're just going to drizzle a little bit in there. Okay. And then we're going to kick this up so that it simmers the alcohol out. Alrighty. Here we go. Excellent. Now we're going to add our tomatoes, which is just, you could, like I said, you can use any kind of tomatoes you like. I prefer my tomatoes a little bit more chunky, but my kids don't, so I go with this. And I will add a little bit of water because I do cook my sauce. And I want a little bit of water to cook this. There we go. Very little. It's like a tablespoon or so. You don't want a lot. Then we're just going to mix this around. There we go. This is going to, that's very thick. There we go. I am going to add a little water. That's very thick. These tomatoes are excellent tomatoes. They're very, very thick. But I don't want it that thick for my pizza sauce. There we go. Excellent. Now, what did we forget to do? Season. You still have to season your sauce, even though you have the onions and the garlic and the basil. We're going to add some granulates. We're going to add some salt. And I'm going to add some fine pepper instead of grind. There we go. Excellent. And we're good to go. 
Now this is going to come to a simmer and I'm going to let it cook for a little while, like maybe 10, 15 minutes. You don't have to overcook this sauce. There we go. Okay, we're going to let this simmer for about 10, 15 minutes and then we're going to take it off. Okay, I've checked these. It's been about 20 minutes. I don't want these to get too, too much bigger. They're almost doubled in size. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to free them up and I'm going to put them into my pans to rise a little bit more, okay? And that's what we're going to just flop them on that side. I need a little room to work. Got a five-foot breakfast bar. It's not big enough. Okay, now, pans. My mother used to make them in a nice big sheet pan, sheet pan pizzas. And as you can see, I've got a really well-seasoned stone, which I use a lot. But I have since turned into the stainless steel pizza pans. These pans are awesome. I love them. My cousin Barbara gave them to me. They're great. I'm going to spray them with a little bit of Pam because we don't want our pizzas to stick. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and we're just going to put it down into the pan. And you're just going to see how nice and soft this dough is. It's just, it's perfect. It's not real sticky, okay, which is what you want. Just going to pull it out to the edge of the pan like so. It'll stick to the edge. We got the Pam down there, which will hold it in its place, okay? And that's basically, I like the rough look. This is going to rise again, so it'll be nice and puffy. I'm going to put these two into the pan, and then we're going to let them rise about another 20 minutes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a sheet. <laughs> I use sheets. And we're just going to cover these up because we don't, want the, uh, we don't want them to get crusty. You want them to just rise. Now, when you r put a sheet over them and you cover them like this, sometimes I use plastic wrap to put them on. In the winter, that's okay because the dough doesn't get too hot. But it's still a little warm. It's still a little summery. So I will put this on. When you pull this off, be careful because sometimes the dough will rise. It gets sticky. If you pull it real quick, you're going to pull your dough right off your pans. So just lightly set that on there. We're going to give these another 15 or 20 minutes. And then I'm going to show you how to blind bake so that you can freeze them. So if you want to make extra, they'll be delicious. You just pop them in with a little sauce, de deck them out. You've got a nice pizza already made. Let's let these rise and we'll be right back. We're going to come in for the unveiling. Ready? Now remember what I said. It's hot. They may be sticky. So go easy, 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 easy. Oh, this one was a little thin, but that's okay. I like thin crust too. <laughs> this was the one that wasn't quite as big as the others. Now, we all know about my new stove. It has a convection bake and it has a regular bake. I've never baked on convection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one with the little thin pot. We're going to put this in the oven first. Normally, a pizza, when I blind bake, is at least 400, what is a blind bake? 425 degrees. What it does is you, a blind bake is when you put it in there and you bake it for like 5, 10 minutes, just so that it's firm enough for you to slide off the pan and then you can freeze them. They're not all the way cooked. This is convection. Convection, I put 375. Okay? You can hear the little fan blowing in there. We're going to see what happens in about 10, 5, 10 minutes. If we don't like it, we do the regular bake. We'll be right back. Okay, this is our first pre-baked pizza. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring it over to the rack. You don't want it cooked all the way. You just want it partially cooked. And you're just going to slide it off. If it sticks a little bit, that's okay. Just let it set there and cool. Okay, we're going to bring this pan over here and we're going to put in one more because there's no way I need five pizzas tonight. I am going to do three, okay? And we're going to put that one in. Now while that one's going, what I'm going to do to save some edit time is I'm going to get this last pizza that we did, that we raised. It's beautiful, beautiful. Nice and soft. Now you could brush this with a little olive oil if you wanted to. I do a lot of the time. 
but I'm kind of trying to watch my calories and there's olive oil inside the crust. So you just take your sauce. I don't put a real ton of sauce on here. Just a little ladle here and there. You can smell, oh, you can smell the basil. You can smell the um, garlic. Oh, it's delicious. You can already tell. Okay. And if you want to make extra sauce, you know, you're going to have some pizzas that you're going to pre-cook and you want to have extra sauce, make two cans. This stuff freezes great. You never have to worry about this going bad. Okay, now, I'm a kind of a cheese freak. We all know that. So, I start out with a little bit of Romano. Not a lot. Just enough to cover every piece. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like this. Okay. Now in the refrigerator, I'm going to walk over to my refrigerator over here, have a big bowl of, this is mozzarella cheese, it's a little bit of shaved cheddar cheese. I like different kinds of cheeses on my pizza, I don't have to just have one. And on this particular one, I'm also going to grab my favorite smoked gouda. We're going to try a little smoked gouda on this one. This one I'm going to make a little bit, almost like a gourmet type. type. You can put anything you want on your pizza. Adam and Kyle like pepperoni. Me and Gina will eat just about anything. So I'm going to put a little bit of the smoked gouda. This is a very, very strong cheese. It carries a lot of weight, so you don't need a lot because it'll just overpower everything. You don't want to overpower it. You just want to, you want to taste it, you know? Take a little bit of cheese here like this and come around your edges. I'm not going to put like 80 pounds of cheese because I want to put some nice toppings. Now over here I have some eggplant, which I'm going to cut into strips. Okay. This is just fried eggplant. I'm going to go around the pizza. Okay, oops, there's none for the middle, but that's all right. We'll cut some of these in half because I have a lot of um, toppings I want to put on, but you want everybody to get a bite, okay? And then we have some spinach, wonderful, wonderful spinach. And this is, I know I'm using my fingers, but it's kind of how I cook. I like to use my fingers. I have clean hands. They're not dirty. All I do is cook and clean anyway, so... Sometimes if you overtop a pizza and you have so much stuff on it, it takes a lot longer to cook. And sometimes your dough can be raw. And in this, I have some just regular roasted, just regular fried peppers. Okay, and we're going to put those. And you use different colors and different, you know, greens. And, and they, they come out really, it looks pretty on the pizza. And I'll oh, put some right here because it looks like it's naked there. No naked pizza. My daughter's favorite thing, black olives. Okay, and these I'm just going to rip in half and put them in different p p parts of the pizza so everybody gets a chunk. As long as everybody gets a piece of taste of something, it's good. Okay. Now, the one thing I want to tell you about the pizza in the rising, the raising stages, okay, is on a warm day, if I say the dough will rise in an hour, check it in 45 minutes. What you, the, the overall goal of this thing is, is to have it double in size the first time. The second time can be anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes so that it gets lighter again after you press it down. Then once they get high enough where they're, they're nice and puffy, so the whole process could take you up to two hours in the winter, maybe even an hour and a half in the summer. It depends on what season you're cooking them in. You don't want them to get all blown out and inflated because I, I think the yeast only can inflate so much and then I, I don't think it, you get a good rise out of it. So this is what we're going to put in for our first pizza. Doesn't it look delicious? I never put normal toppings on my pizza. I like all kinds of stuff. And we'll check this. This is getting nice and puffy, but it's not quite ready yet. We'll be, I'm going to take this one out of the oven, put it on the cooling rack, pop in our first pizza, and we'll see what, how it looks when we come back. 
Okay, we're going to pop this in. I didn't like the way the oven baked on convection, so what I did was I put it on regular bake, 425. We're going to leave it in there about 20, 25 minutes, check it till golden brown. While we're waiting for that to go, I'm going to get the oil for the fried dough ready, or pizza frites. Okay, we saved one ball of dough for pizza frites, or fried dough. We used to have this a lot when we were kids also on pizza night. This was always a big treat. You just cut off a little chunk of dough. Don't burn yourself, it's very hot. And you pull it, pull it a little bit as you cut it so that you get a nice little piece. Okay, and you drop them in the oil. This is nice hot oil, it's not olive oil. It's just a vegetable oil. I don't like to deep fry with uh, olive oil. It doesn't have a very good burn point. Then you just turn them around as they turn golden brown. Okay. These got a head start on me, so we're going to let those brown up. You can use sugar, and you can use powdered sugar. I'll show you when we're done. Okay. I'm let these fry up. You need a few more minutes. Okay. Nice and golden brown. It's been about 20, 25 minutes. Looks delicious. Boy, are the kids going to be surprised. And here is our pizza frites, or fried dough. I'm going to sprinkle them with some powdered sugar all over the place. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. These are our pizzas that we pre-cooked. I wrapped them in plastic, put a little piece of tin foil between them, put them in a bag. I'm going to double bag them, and here's our pizza. And the best thing about pizza night is paper plates. Thank you for watching Tina Cooks. Have a good night. Come on, yeast. It's coming nice and slow. Gonna scrape, scrape, scrape. That's why it's called a bench scraper. It scrapes the bench. Ah! I'm being taken over by dough.